What is going on, everybody? Thanks for joining me. Today is National Freak Out About Zeke Elliott in week one day. Today is going to be a wild one. People getting rid of Zeke left and right for a ham sandwich. Let's take a look at the replay from last night. Prior to kickoff against one of the best defenses, if not the best defense in the league against the run, Zeke Elliott maintained a 1.3 to 1.5 ADP. But entering quarter one, he dropped down to mid first round. Entering quarter two, he was nowhere to be found inside round one. By the end of the game, Zeke Elliott can now be had using a third or fourth round wide receiver drafted a week ago. In one short game, Zeke Elliott has fallen off the face of the earth, no longer worth rostering in your league, apparently, according to all of the people. But Smitty, he was a 1.3, 1.5 overall pick. Why isn't he doing anything? We're going to break down Elliott, Austin Eckler. Week one over reactions if you catch my drift. It's all coming up on this Friday version of the Fantasy Football Show, and it begins now. This is the Fantasy Football Show with your host, Smitty. Top five running back. You're watching the Fantasy Football Show. Smitty. Goodness gracious, people. We have a freak out episode going on. We knew this was going to happen. I talked about it before the game. Week one is both annoying and amazing all at the same time because people overreact. They think, oh my God, this guy's slumping. What do I do? Do I get rid of him? It's one week. He hasn't done anything. He played the best rushing defense in the league. Everyone and their mother wants to get rid of Zeke Elliott right now. I have my HeySmitty.com text line, which you can order at HeySmitty.com, by the way. And I can't tell you how many people are texting me going, Smitty, I can get Keenan Allen right now for Zeke Elliott. Hey, Smitty, Chase Edmonds and Deontay Johnson, should I take that for Zeke Elliott? I don't even understand. If It would be one thing if it was one or two people. But it's like a massive amount of people. People are so quick to react. Knee-jerk reactions. We knew it was coming. We knew it was going to come. I just didn't expect it to be from a guy you took at number four, number five, number three, number six overall. If you're this quick to get out and back out of a situation and take a garbage trade, you might be too nervous to play fantasy football. Not to mention my number one recommendation for anybody drafting Elliott was to get Tony Pollard at all costs. No matter what, a must own, you are secure. I don't want to hear that Elliott struggled against the Bucks. And oh my God, let me tell you what's going on here. You know I have the psychology den. Let's take it over to the psychology den. Oh, hey. Welcome to the psychology den here at the Fantasy Football Show, pal. I hear you've been suffering from a little case of the watching everybody else go crazy, but my player's not. Something has to be wrong with him, right? He's broken. We talk about psychology and fantasy football here on the show all the time. Recency bias, peer pressure, foot in the door phenomenon. We're going to break all that down all season long and more. What's going on here with you today, pal, is that you're watching everybody else. You got this overload of stimuli where A.B., Godwin, Dak, Brady, Lamb, Cooper, Gronk, everybody's going crazy but your player. And you think, okay, something's wrong. If he's not going nuts right now, he's got to be broken, right? Wrong. Now you're getting all nervous and you're willing to take the car you drove off the lot, brand new last night, back to the dealership, even though you're going to lose $2,000 on the deal because you already drove the car off the lot. Now you're taking it back as a used car. You got Tony Pollard because I told you he was a must own. If you don't have Pollard... If you have Pollard, relax. Don't trade out of the situation like you're driving on the freeway in a lane slowing down and the lane next to you is going crazy. You change over to that lane. Now your lane slows down. The lane you were just in is zipping on by. You switch back over to the lane and now that lane stops again. The lane you were in zips on by. Have faith in the players that you drafted early on. We're talking about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, guys. Come on, relax. What an explosion we had last night. Dak, 403, three TDs and one INT. Brady over here with 379, 
four TDs and two INTs. Some turnovers in this game. The Cowboys are a bad defense, but they're also a defense that can make plays, and that's good and bad. That's good for Dak and the Cowboys because they'll be in games. Their defense can still keep them in games, even though the defense has given up a ton of yards. I think the Cowboy players, Cooper, Dak, Lamb, yes, even Elliott, they're all protected into a situation where they're going to have to throw, 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 run, 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 be in the mix in contests so that, that Zeke's not really phased out of games, but they're still having to score the football. Elliott, 11 carries for 33 yards, not a great night. We know that. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that this was a bad game for, for Elliott owners. But we knew it was going to be a tough matchup going against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. People that are walking out of this game going, I can't believe I drafted Zeke Elliott at number four, number five, without knowing that he had a tough matchup in week one, it's kind of a crazy way to walk into, into the opening day. Elliott looked fine. He had like a 12 or 13 yard scamper. He was fine. He was getting hit in the backfield by two defenders at a time. Dallas can block. It was a tough defense. It wasn't Zeke looking bad. Zeke is in the best shape of his life, looking great all offseason long, and everyone, because of the production, 11 for 33. He averaged three yards a carry. He has to be bad. I keep seeing Zeke played bad. Zeke looked awful. These are all comments from people talking about the stat sheet, the game log. Zeke didn't look bad. Zeke looked fine. So uh, enough of Zeke. Don't sell low. If you want to back out of it, if, if you've got a gut instinct that Zeke is going to bust, and it's not driven off of this psychological mind game of watching everybody else explode but Zeke Elliott and further making you feel nervous about the fact that everyone exploded, there has to be something broken with Elliot if he didn't do well. If your thought of him busting has nothing to do with that and you're you're able to separate that and look at it fairly, then then, then back out. Go get a, a high second round wide receiver. I don't think you're getting a running back. If you want to trade out of Elliot, you got to go cross position. You got to go after a Jefferson and get maybe something else. You got to go after a Ridley, a player getting drafted in that top 15 that's a wide receiver. That would be the best way to back out of Elliott if you are impatient and you're too reactive. Past that, good luck. You're not getting rid of Elliott right now for a running back that was drafted right around his area. And if you're gonna go looking for an Edmonds and a Deontay, I can't help you. Amari Cooper looking fantastic. 13 receptions for 139 and two TDs. He did get kind of banged up for a second, came right back in he was fine he ran off the field after he got banged up he's on the ground for a second we're like oh man holding our breath lamb dropped several opportunities he had another touchdown he could have had seven catches for 104 and a touchdown this man is insane 16 targets for cooper 15 for lamb not every one of those targets for lamb was catchable though don't let everybody that's saying lamb had a lot of drops all of them were drops without looking into it don't don't let that influence you too much but lamb is going to beast out lamb will only get better and it's amazing after the game lamb just had seven catches for 104 and a touchdown could have had another touchdown it's amazing how many people are aggressively coming at me <laughs> like smitty told you cooper was better than lamb like who is gonna come in here and say either one of them is blowing the other out of the water like it's the it's the most ridiculous like commentary I've seen yet. It's worse than the, hey, should I trade Zeke for a ham sandwich? It's, hey, Smitty, I told you, I told you uh, that this was going to happen. Now, what do you think, a lamb? Like, I can't, I can't comprehend all the negative comments that are coming in. There's a lot of good ones too. But look, if you ask me right now, who's the number one wide receiver in Dallas moving forward? You're not going to change my mind. It is CD Lamb in my opinion, and I don't get mad at anybody if they like Cooper more. Let me repeat that for everybody in the back. If you like Cooper more than Lamb, I'm fine with it. You have a very good argument to be made here, but so do I, and Lamb is going to get better and better and better as the season progresses, so uh, I don't wanna hear how ridiculous it is if I still like Lamb more than Cooper. I love both of them. Both of them are gonna ball out Dak Prescott might have an insane top four to five QB season, if not top two to four. And in a top two to four QB season for Dacky boy, Cooper and Lamb are both top 10 wide receivers. So chill out with the old 
I told you that Lamb was not the number one wide receiver, Smitty. He had seven catches. Cooper had 13. He, Cooper had two TDs. I like both of them. I love Dak. I love the offense. What did I say before the season started? Dallas was going to have 10 wins and ball out. I'm not predicting a Super Bowl win. They lost the game. They're starting off 0-1. But they will win 10 wins because they ball out every single game. Cooper's a wide receiver one in fantasy. Lamb is a wide receiver one in fantasy. Dak is a top two to five quarterback in fantasy. Let everybody else play their week one contest too before we just say that that's improbable that he's outside your top two. I know a lot of you Cowboys fans are going to be like, how are you not saying he's top two right now? Let's realize everybody's going to play week one, but Dak's in the mix for top two to five QB numbers. Elliot will be fine. I am buying low at every corner I can. If I can grab Elliot for a combination of like Miles Sanders, not that I own him really anywhere, but a Miles Sanders type running back, a Jacobs type running back, you throw in a Deontay Johnson, try doing what these people are supposedly trying to do when I'm getting these text messages, Deontay and Edmonds, do your worst and wait until week one happens too. You might have guys that might overperform. You might be able to buy low on Zeke even further because People are going to freak out after week one is complete and they lose their week. Anybody that had Zeke Elliott that loses their week will be more down on Elliott after week one's complete and the L gets put on the board. They'll be more down on Elliott than they are right now. So waiting to trade for Elliott might not even be a bad idea. Antonio Brown, five for 121 and one TD. Godwin, nine catches for 105 and one TD. Gronk. Eight catches for 90 yards and two TDs. And then Mike Evans, three for 24. Where was Mike Evans? Look, if you think Evans isn't going to rotate with one of these guys popping off, having a two, three TD game coming up here in the next week or two, you're crazy. Mike Evans is a touchdown machine. Brady is so smart, knows how to manipulate a defense from one week to the next. And when people are focusing on AB and Godwin and Gronk, he's going to feed force feed Mike Evans and he'll have a two or three TD game. It's coming up. Buy low on Mike Evans. Buy low on Mike Evans. Buy low on Mike Evans. And what did I say about AB? The best handcuff in fantasy football. The only wide receiver handcuff in fantasy football. And now he's not even a handcuff. He was a handcuff that you could use as your flex option. And I don't want to hear Smitty. AB's not... AB's not a wide receiver three or a handcuff. He's not a wide receiver three. Rewind what I just said. You drafted him as a wide receiver three and handcuff. And now you have yourself a potential wide receiver two moving forward. And if Godwin or Evans go down, either one of them or both of them at the same time, which is not that improbable given how banged up they both get. AB is a locked and loaded wide receiver one top five to 10 wide receiver in fantasy football every game that one of those guys is out. And that was the allure of drafting AB as your wide receiver three flex option, which you were able to do. And before a lot of you start playing Friday morning quarterback, everyone and their mother contemplated benching or starting AB in week one because he was in the flex spot. The most beautiful flex spot selection you made in 2021. Cuffing AB to Godwin, cuffing AB to Evans has now opened the door to having two starting wide receivers for your lineup and a dilemma that may lead to a potential trade for your team because now you got to put your wide receiver three or your wide receiver two on the bench. Now you can trade. Expect all these bucks to ball out pretty much all year long. They'll have games where one goes off and one doesn't. Look at Mike Evans. It's going to happen. I don't trust the running game whatsoever. I do trust Tom Brady to throw for 302 to three, two to four touchdowns a game. This was the best scenario for a week one opening day game we could have cooked up. I know a lot of you are disappointed about Elliott. I know some of you are disappointed about Mike Evans, but we need to take a lot of good out of this. We need to realize that for Elliott and for Evans, the offenses look amazing. Guys, I am always live. I'm constantly live. And here's my live stream schedule for the rest of the year. This doesn't mean I don't drop videos just like this one throughout the week or have random live streams or go live on Instagram pretty much daily. You better get over to IG and follow me because you're missing out on one, maybe two live streams a day on Instagram that are unscheduled that just go live. But my locked and loaded live stream schedule is right here. The Fantasy Football Show live 
5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern every single Tuesday and Thursday. That's locked and loaded. My midnight live stream on Friday, my midnight live stream on Saturday, both Eastern time. And we go as long as I feel like going. We've gone two, three hours before on, on these two shows here. So it just kind of depends on what time I got. And the entire one hour before the morning games kick off, I'm live on Instagram at the Fantasy Football Show. Again, follow me here on IG. Turn on your notifications so you know when I go live. But that entire hour, I'm doing start bench advice. So join me on IG. We have a lot of people to talk about buying low on. And don't forget on my YouTube channel, if you go to my main YouTube like homepage, click the blue join button and join any one of the two tiers that I have, my exclusive YouTube memberships that gets you access to two video calls, two like Zoom type calls, we do it on Discord. They're like two Zoom calls where we all jump in, you can turn your mic off, you can turn your camera off, you can just listen, you can chat your questions or you can jump in like a Zoom call and we just talk about what's happening during the games, we talk about what players to pick up, who to trade away, who to trade for and the calls are set Halftime of the morning games, halftime of the Sunday night game, every single Sunday. So if you want in on that, go to my main YouTube homepage, click the blue join button, and get on these calls every single Sunday. Two calls every Sunday. Get out of here. This is the Fantasy Football Show with your host, Smitty. You're watching the Fantasy Football Show. I'm Smitty!